Bear with me, okay? I will compare both watches side by side to prove my point later. What's up, people? Welcome back to my channel. A big shout out to T Bean Coffee Leaf in requesting me for a review on the new releases from Tudor in Watches and Wonders 2024. As requested, I hope to feast your eyes in this review on one of the collections and hopefully talk more about the other collections you see here in my next video. This year, among the other lineups that were released, Tudor is introducing an additional model to the Black Bay 58 line, and that is the Black Bay 58 GMT. Today we will be chatting about the good and the bad about the 58 GMT. Whilst Tudor may have released quite a few GMT watches such as the Black Bay GMT 41mm and the Black Bay GMT Pro, which I've made quite a lot of unfavorable remarks about it, and quite a few of you did give me a tough time for that. EMOTIONAL damn it! Similarly, this review is also my personal opinion. I'm not a watch expert or anything, I just love watches and love talking about it. You don't have to take my word for it. I recommend that you do check the watches out at your local boutique store and perhaps you can share your thoughts in the comments below. The first thing I do need to point out here is that the 58 GMT comes in both a 3-link bracelet and a black rubber strap. Between the bracelet and the rubber strap, I'll tell you which do I prefer at the end of this video. The bracelet is predominantly brush finish with a side polish finish with rivets. The removable links are attached using screw instead of pins, which is a good thing. The new T-Fit claps is really amazing. There are no adjustment holes on the side of the claps which gives it a clean look. And in order to extend or retract with the micro adjustment, all you need to do is lift the claps or pull the bracelet downward and pull to extend or push in to retract. The claps also has a ceramic ball bearing to help with the locking mechanism, which is much more durable unlike some other brands. The case is polished finish on the side and the bevel. The front and the lugs however are all brushed and there are no holes on the lugs giving it a clean look. However, the lack of holes and the lack of an easy release mechanism does make it a little cumbersome when changing the strap or bracelet. Underneath the closed case bag is Tudor's new caliber MT5450-U, which achieves both COSC and META certification. What this means is that the 58 GMT has achieved the highest standard of precision, i.e. within a 5 second range of variation each day, conforms to the ISO on the waterproofness capability, and with the minimum of 65 hours power reserve, it can withstand magnetism of up to 15,000 gauss. The crown on the 58 GMT has an embossed Tudor rose on it with only 22 notches. What this means is that you have a bigger ridge and a wider notch which gives you a better grip when turning the crown. To put it into perspective, my BB58 Blue here has 36 notches. Yes, I counted them. There are also no crown guards on this giving it a more elegant look. The bezel has an anodized aluminium insert with hues of burgundy, black and gilt. The split between the black and burgundy splits in between the 6am and the 6pm. The numerals on the bezel are nicely, evenly and consistently done on the bezel as compared to the Black Bay GMT Pro. Bear with me okay, I will compare both watches side by side to prove my point later. The ridges on the bezel are polished and blunted as compared with the sharp ridges on my BB58 Blue. The black matte dial has gilt printings, minute tracks, polished hands, polished marker frames with loom, and a frameless date at the 3 o'clock position, which has a white backdrop with black numerals. Personally, I would prefer the GMT hand to be in red or in a different color to help differentiate it with the other hands. Be that as it may, I still think that the BB58 GMT is the best GMT watch among the Tudor's current collection, especially for a wrist like mine. <laughs> boy. Not only is it a good size in terms of its diameter, the height fits well underneath my cuff shirt. Placing the 58 GMT in between the two GMT41 shows the significant difference in size. In comparison with the GMT Pro, which also has a 39mm diameter but with a thickness of 14.6mm, whilst on paper there is a 1.8mm variance in thickness, the difference on their structure gives an illusion that the GMT Pro is a lot thicker. Though the case back cover on the 58 GMT doesn't protrude out that much as seen in the GMT Pro, visually, the case is a lot thinner on the 58 GMT thanks to its dome-shaped sapphire crystal that sits taller compared to the GMT Pro. 
With regards to the printing of the logo and the wordings on the DAO, I find those on the 58 GMT to be a tad larger than those on the GMT Pro. As for the numerals on the bezel, here's a comparison side by side. I personally think that the execution on the 58 GMT is a lot better than the GMT Pro. You can be the judge of it. As for its price, there is also a difference between the 58 GMT, the GMT Pro and the GMT 41. With regards to the bracelet and rubber strap of the 58 GMT, I personally prefer the rubber. Not only is it cheaper, it is also lighter and more comfortable on the wrist. And I don't really need to worry about causing scratches on the bracelet. As a GMT watch with 200 meter of water resistance, this is a great utility watch and the rubber seems to be more versatile. Anyway, that's just my personal opinion. But what do you think? Feel free to drop your comments below and I'll catch you in the next review. Until the next one, thank you for watching.